Welcome to the fight with Teddy Atlas, presented by our friends at MyBookie. Check them out at MyBookie.ag. We're here in Lower Manhattan at the Trinity Boxing Club, getting ready to do a fight plan for the Sean Porter versus Terrence Bud Crawford fight coming up. We're all excited for this one. Teddy, what are you waiting for? Well, you know, in true transparency, as we always are, it's not exactly the one that we were waiting for, the one that we really want in the welterweight division, which would be, of course, Spence and Crawford. But you know what? Right now, it'll do, because Porter has become that centurion at the welterweight gate. Yeah, I mean, he, he tells whether or not you're worthy to go through that gate. He's only lost to the top guys, but he truly is the fire that forges you, that validates if you're good enough, if you can be that special guy. And this will tell us whether or not Crawford can handle a big, strong welterweight, the welterweight we're all waiting to see him with, Spence. So this is just what the doctor ordered in that way. Whether or not Porter will turn Crawford's undefeated record into ashes or whether or not Crawford will go on and be ready to face the guy that we're all waiting for him to face. This truly is that little bit of a litmus test. And there's only one way to find out the answer, to go into the kitchen, turn the heat on, and examine the whole thing. You ready? Let's do it. Let's go in that kitchen. All right, Teddy, before we get into what to look for from the fighters, want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors today, MyBookie. Check them out at MyBookie.ag. Use the promo code ATLAS for a 50% credit on your first deposit, up to $1,000. There's going to be a lot of opportunity to make some money on this upcoming fight, starting with Teddy. What do we need to look for from uh, Terrence Crawford to get the win against Sean Porter, well, arguably one of his toughest challenges? Yeah, oh, no doubt about that. I mean, he's got a big, strong welterweight that brings it. So there's no doubt that this probably is his toughest challenge. And it's supposed to be uh, at this point, the way that they're putting this fight forward and promoting this fight. He's dealing, always know who you're dealing with, what you're dealing with. That's where it starts. So he knows that he's dealing with a big welterweight who's going to be aggressive. Somewhere along the line, Porter's going to do what Porter does. He's going to come and get you. So Crawford needs to do what he's very capable of doing, which is to control the outside, to create space, and to get room to throw counters. In between sometimes the fatter punches, the wider punches, the bigger punches of Mr. Porter. And when I look at Crawford, I see a guy that is exceptional in two areas where, believe it or not, he might be one of the best in the history of the sport in two areas. One as a switch hitter. He's as good a switch hitter as I've ever seen. I mean, put Mickey Mano aside, you know, hey, Mickey Mano is pretty good. Uh, switch hitting either side of the plate, power or average. Andre Ward was good, but I've never seen anybody as good as Bud Crawford. And also instincts. He has the greatest instincts I've ever seen, where he can actually make it up as he's doing it. He, he's, he just, his instincts direct him. Yeah. Uh, they, they just, uh, they take him to the right place. Very few people have that. Yeah, and to that point, if you haven't watched the interview we did with Terrence Crawford, he speaks about his ability to switch stances early in his career that his coach would get angry at him, but he would switch so effectively and stop people in the amateurs that he would go back to the coach and say, I told you I could do it, so the coach eventually relented and said, all right, let's do this. I guess I can't stop you. So He's got his own GPS system <laughs> that gets him to the right freaking place at the right freaking time. So you're going to look now, what we're going to demonstrate is for, again, 
for Crawford to play into his strengths and attack the weaknesses of Porter, where he can entice Porter to do the things he needs him to do to be successful. So let's get started. Well, you're in an orthodox stance, obviously, as Mr. Porter, and here it starts. He's got the option, he being Crawford. He's here, do I feel like going orthodox or do I feel like going lefty from the southpaw stance? I think, and I always talk about this sport, the intellectual part of it. That's what separates guys. Yeah, you got to have talent. Yeah, you got to be tough. We got all that. But this, the strongest muscle in your body, mm -hmm. this, you have to be able to separate yourself also by using those talents the right way and outthinking your opponents. So I think he turned southpaw at some point. Why? To entice the southpaw killer, to get Porter to think the way he wants him to think, to think, oh, when he's southpaw, I can hit him with right hands because right hands do work against southpaws often. And sometimes Porter, especially in his earlier days, will launch punches, will reach for a punch. He's gotten a little better but you can still get him to do that. So, if you're Crawford, you turn southpaw, get in his brain a little bit, that you're making him think right hand. And then what do you do? You set a trap. You use your jab, you step out, you get him to reach in. Jab, get him to reach, bang, bang! And you counter, right there. You knew he was gonna throw the right hand. You knew you were gonna create that opening. Another option that he has, is again, Porter will look to be aggressive, sometimes sometimes get a little fat with his punches, a little meaty with his punches. What you do is, this one southpaw or, or orthodox, doesn't matter, either way. What you do is, y you let him think you're going back just as far, but you only go half the distance, just to entice, to en get him to engage. To get him to engage to start opening up, so you can punch him between the white punches. Punch inside the cylinder. So you go back, you're like, bang, bang, bang! Right inside the cylinder. Right, see, see, right inside the cylinder. You heard that old saying, safety inside the eye of the storm? That's what it is. And there it is. If Crawford can do that, well, at the end of the day, he'll be on his way. You know, he'll still be undefeated. And he'll be on his way to that fight that We'll still be waiting for a guy named Spence. All right, we talked about what Crawford needs to do to get the win here, Teddy. What can Sean Porter do, if anything, to beat Bud Terrence Crawford? Well, at the end of the day, he's gonna have to, it's gonna turn out he's gonna be Porter. He's gonna try to be the bigger, stronger, more aggressive, busier fighter. But he'll throw in a little, few little tricks him and his father have worked on over the last two years where he's getting a little slicker, a little smarter, a little more polished, where he uses his jab, he'll move to the side, his jab, he'll move off to the side a little bit, you know, he'll, he'll throw a little fame move off this way, take a little walk like Jersey Joe used to take little walks. You know, he, he's, he's gotten a little better uh, in those areas, and he'll have to be better. But at the end of the day, he will be Porter. And as I started this, he will have to bring it. He will have to bring what Porter brings, you know, a storm, a storm of punches, a storm of intensity, a storm of fury in a controlled way. But what he has to really make sure doesn't happen is that he doesn't feed or fall into the strengths of Crawford that we already talked about when we did the Crawford part, where he'll fall into traps, where he'll reach, where he'll allow Crawford to create those spaces, those gaps, where he can cause havoc, where he can score punches, create those opportunities. He's got to stay away from that. And another thing that he's got to be really, really cognizant of is not allowing it to become, I don't think it will, you're going to laugh, but not allowing it to become a boring fight where Crawford can win the fight, control rounds, just with a jab on the outside. Yep. He's got to at least, if he can't match the jab of Crawford, he's got to at least 
negate some of it. Give him a taste of his own medicine. Give him something to worry about from the jab. Even if he jabs to the chest. Yeah. Because when you're loose, sometimes the chest is easier. Just to stabilize Crawford on the outside. All right, let's get to it. So, you're, you're going to be Crawford. And, you know, whether you're in the lefty or the righty position, doesn't really matter when it comes to this. Porter, what do we just say? What he doesn't want to do. You, sometimes you can start with what not to do. Even if you're not sure what to do. I know what I'm not going to do. <laughs> and what he's not going to do is he's not going to allow Crawford, understanding Crawford, being aware of what Crawford is because that's your assignment. That's your job. You've got to know your opponent. That's your job. That when you throw, that he's going to make you reach. So that when you throw something, you're going to step out. He's going to make you reach, and he's going to make you do this. That's what you don't want to happen. Now, how do you avoid that from happening? I got the answer. Let him think that you're going to throw, right? Give him a little, ah, give him a little faint. Make him move prematurely. Make him move too soon. Again, make a, and then, bam, 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 double up the jab. Double up the jab to close the gap. Because one jab will leave you short, and he can still counter. He still has room to counter. Two jabs will smother him, will smother his right hand, his left hand, whatever, but it will get you in. It will get you entry in a safe way. So take one more look at it. So you give him a faint, bam, make a move too soon, now bam, 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 and then you close the gap. Now, once you close the gap, more work to be done. Business ain't over. You know, the, uh, the store's not closed. You get inside, and you want to work that skinny body, that thin body. You're a good body puncher. You want to work that body inside. And what you want to do is, by banging it, move your head to both sides so you're taking care of defense. You don't want to get caught in an uppercut. Don't keep your head in the middle. Bang, 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 bang. Keep working in there. And apply enough pressure to force Crawford to do what you want him to do, to be tall and to back out. And then you can catch him. Like Joe Frazier caught Muhammad Ali, where you force him to go back, he goes back, whap, whap, you go right with him. And you know what? That's right in the arsenal of Porter. He loves to come in with those big shots like that, those big left hooks. He can do this. That's what he's got to do if he's going to pull off the upset. The throw in Manila, well, it would be uh, the thriller in grand old Las Vegas. Either way, it'll be a thriller. All right, for the guys at my bookie and the players, the line on this fight is Crawford minus 700, Porter plus 500. Uh, you know, a lot of line. beans. A lot of beans to be, uh, be spilling over there, laying out. Uh, you know what? I'll take a shot because I like value. Mm -hmm. I'll take a shot and listen, I know that what I'm about to say is the underdog side of it because that's why I'm getting good value. Mm -hmm. But I'll take a shot on that under. I'll take a shot that Crawford, that maybe Bud Crawford can be the first guy, not to drop him because he was dropped by Spence, but the first guy to actually stop the real tough, the real great shin, iron shin, granite shin, Porter and, and giant heart. Porter, he might because he lands clean punches, precise punches. He's that kind of, you know, surgeon, so to speak. And he has those instincts. And if he hurts you, he's a great finisher. He knows how to finish you. So maybe I take a little shot, you know, poke a little money, throw, you know, a couple, couple beans on the under. Um, under 10 and a half, the over is plus 225. You're getting plus money on the under at 10 and a half. Probably a good value. Yeah, and listen. I'll tell you another, I like Crawford to win this fight, but if you're a fan of Portis and you like the aggression, his heart, you know, how he surprised people in the Spence fight, even though he lost it, that it was so close. He was winning early. It was so close. If you're one of those guys, you know what? How can you tell you not to grab 500? Yeah. Grab, grab plus 500. Go ahead. Go grab it. You, you never know. But... I'm on the side of Crawford, and I'm also going to, I don't want to lay 700, though. No. I like him, but I don't like him that much. <laughs> but I, I take a shot at the under. There you have it, guys. Good luck to everyone. We'll see you after the fight.